There's a large segment of the Pokemon card collecting hobby where the cards are so incredibly expensive because the prices are being intentionally inflated and manipulated by a very small number of corporations, kind of like the Mafia. What's going on everybody? Welcome back. You're watching the channel, Dr. Applesauce 2. My name's Will. It's another beautiful day here in Texas. I hope you guys know that I love you. God loves you, that there is an awesome plan for your life. I have a very special, very interesting video today. We're going to lift the veil behind some of the craziness that's going on with the Japanese Pokemon card market. Absolute insane bonkers prices coming out of Japan. And caveat, yes, we all know it's because the demand is way, way larger than the supply. Yes, there's a small group of people and a small group of companies that are intentionally deciding before sets release, how much cards should go for, and that directly affects the market and crazy price manipulation is happening. Today we're gonna to talk with my friend Brian from Pokey Any. He runs Pokey Any. If you've been watching my channel for any amount of time, you know that I do have an affiliate partnership with Pokey Any. What he has to say, kind of lifting the veil behind some of this craziness, because he works with these people every day, is really interesting and really insightful, and it's very valuable information for all of us to have. Now, after this video, if you respect what he has to say, go to pokeyany.com, order yourself some Obsidian Flames or some Pokemon 151 or some Japanese cards or some Korean cards and use code applesauce to get yourself a free booster pack with your order it helps him it helps me and it helps you getting some great product from a store that you can trust let's go over and talk to somebody who deals with these japanese suppliers every day and has some great insight and can help us learn about the craziness that's going on over in japan with the pokemon card hobby why are japanese booster boxes priced so high my name is brian i own pokeyany.com we started with japanese cards now we do korean and english and i'm going to tell you about the market so a lot of people will say Americans are price gouging Japanese booster boxes. It's actually not true. Americans are selling overpriced booster boxes. So who controls the market price? It's actually a very small amount of companies in Japan, like way smaller than you would think. And they control the entire industry. This is a DECA to $100 million industry controlled by only a few select companies. You guys have probably seen one of them. Um, every time there's a new set release, you'll see like kind of a digital poster with buy prices on Japanese singles before the set even comes out. Now, how do you think that is? How do you think that a Japanese seller prices a Charizard card from Black Flame before the set releases? Well, I'll tell you, it's exactly what you think. It's arbitrary. So what happened with like Triplet Beat, for example, which also came out really high out the gate. The Japanese folks looked at Dendra. They thought, oh, Americans like waifu cards. We're going to price Dendra at like $600. We're going to buy Dendra at $600. Now, of course, no local Japanese store is actually going to pay that for a card that comes from a $30 MSRP box. It's all nonsense. These distributors will get together and they decide, okay, this card we're going to say is worth $600. This card's worth $500. And then they base the booster box price off of those single prices. If it works, if it's a set that Americans really like, like Marnie or Miriam or something like that, then the booster box price stays high. If they guess wrong, like the Charizard from Black Flame, then the box crashes. There's really no risk in them choosing the wrong number because the MSRP of a Japanese box is like $35. So even if they cut their chosen price in half and thirds and fourths, they're still doubling their money at least. Now, a lot of you guys are like, well, Brian, why do you work with these people? Well, my suppliers are freaking awesome. They are basically in the same situation as we are. They're just a tier above us. So the big daddies, the, the Yakuza of trading cards, they determine this price arbitrarily. My suppliers buy from someone that buys from them. There's a chain, guys. And that gets passed on to me and everyone makes their cut. And then you guys are ultimately the people that pay the most, but I also pay a lot. Now I know what you're thinking, Brian, you're just saying that so you can make buco bucks on this stuff. Guys, let me tell you on a secret. Americans are panicky, panicky creatures. Look at the price of English booster boxes. MSRP 165, market price 95, 100, 110. It's a race to the bottom every set. Americans love racing to the bottom. That's what we do because we're panicky and we like quick money and stupid money. Don't you think that would happen with Japanese cards? Of course it would. Some of you think we're paying MSRP for Japanese boxes, which I, I mean, in that fantasy world, I'd be a multimillionaire. But let's say I'm paying double MSRP. Let's say for V-Star Universe, I'm getting that sucker for like 60 bucks. Don't you think I would undercut all the other Americans selling it at 100 plus? Even if I charged a $20 premium, 
I'd be $20, $25 cheaper than all my competitors. And I can get infinite of these. There's no shortage of boxes. So let's say I'm, I'm charging $80 for a V-Star Universe box, way below the competition. I'd be making $20 a box. That's a good profit. I'd probably sell 2,000 boxes a day at that. $40,000. Even if I sold 1,000 boxes, what's 20 times 1,000? 20,000. Don't you think I would do that? Don't you think anyone would do that if they could get these boxes for only double MSRP? Of course they would. Fast money is good money. Churn and burn. Cash is king. You know, it's like, of course we would. But Americans aren't paying that much less than you guys are. Now, to take the position of like devil's advocate, if all the American sellers stopped selling Japanese cards, inevitably the market price of Japanese cards would fall. Of course it would. And I think everyone would be happy with that, but it's not realistic for me and all of my competition to come together and decide, hey guys, we're gonna do a one year strike on Japanese booster boxes so that in 2024, 2025, they're cheaper. We'd all love the result of that, but it's not realistic. And I've got a very quirky series of comparisons to make that kind of illustrate that point on why we're not evil for doing so. McDonald's chicken nuggets. We know those chickens are like living the worst life possible to make the chicken nuggets cheap, right? And we all don't like that. No, nobody likes chickens being sad. If we all bound together in the world and decided, hey, we're gonna give up eating chicken nuggets for a year. McDonald's chicken farmers would, there'd be less chickens being mistreated, right? Obviously. And everyone could agree that would be a good thing. But the thing is, it's not realistic to even ask every American to stop eating chicken nuggets for a year. Everyone knows that if everyone stopped, it would be better. But everyone knows that not everyone will stop, therefore everyone does it. A more extreme example would be like the nuclear arms race. We all know that nukes would be better off not existing. But we all have nukes, and anyone that tells you their country got rid of nukes is lying or stupid. Um, no country has gotten rid of nuclear warheads in the past, well, since they've been invented, because we all know that no one else will, and it perpetuates the problem. Extreme example, but you get the concept. We as sellers all know if we stop providing Japanese products for a year, the price would go down. Of course it would. But the thing is, one, people like money, of course. And two, a lot of us are so fully invested in this life now that it's not even possible without greatly affecting our finances, uh, mortgage, uh, husbands, wives, kids, etc. Um, like this is my full-time job now and I do sell Korean and English cards, which is great. Diversification is very important as a business. But again, it's just, it's not realistic. We're all too heavily ingrained. And unfortunately that creates a problem that again, perpetuates to you and it just keeps on going around and around. So. That's kind of the situation. So anyone that tells you American sellers are getting the stuff for MSRP, Jesus, or double or even triple, they just don't know how this works. They're ignorant to the market. And again, no judgment, that's fine, but this is how it works. It's a very small group of very powerful companies. They get together, they price fix, market manipulate, and then see how far they can take it. If they go too far, they just, knock it back and knock it back sometimes. It's like a door-to-door -door salesman. They always start their pitch at, oh, we'll do all your windows for $300. And then the person tells them, no. Oh, we have a special, it's only 200. Oh, we're in the neighborhood, 150. And they keep going down and down and down and they're not losing money. They just know that they started so high that they can go down as many times as, as they want to make the sale and still get some profit. That's what Japan's doing right now. In America, price fixing and market manipulation is illegal. In Japan, they might have different laws. I'm too lazy to look them up. And in all honesty, no one really cares and they're gonna get away with it. But yeah, we're not making as much money on this stuff as you think we are. We're just doing a whole lot of volume. Like in June, we did you know 450 grand volume. Uh, we didn't make that much per order, but when you're doing anything half a million times, you're making money. So. That's kind of how this works. That's why we're able to stay in business despite not making much per box. Also, I don't really care if you buy Japanese because we do uh, English, Korean, and Indonesian, and I make just as much, if not more, on those sets. So I don't really care. I mean, I, I buy based on what you buy. Um, so I, I'm pretty uninvested. So again, my suppliers, I thank you guys for being as reasonable as you can be. I know you're paying way too much for this stuff too. And I know you watch my Instagram and my YouTube. So 
thank you genuinely because like my customers who are dealing with these horrible prices thank you guys for supporting the store buying from me you could get it cheaper directly from japan you might have to wait longer it might be slightly riskier but you and i both know that you're buying from my store because uh you you like the store and you want to support me and the wife and this adorable dog pair so thank you to all my customers too. I hope that comes off as non-biased as possible. There's still gonna be people that think I'm making all this up. I don't know what to tell you. I'm pretty freaking transparent. Transparency is profitable. Don't ever believe someone who does something out of the kindness of their heart on the internet. There's always a reason for me. I, I wanna thank you guys for watching and buying from me. You've changed my life. And also transparency is profitable. And Ryan did want me to make sure to communicate to you guys that he does acknowledge as a US seller that he is contributing to the problem, meaning under the scenario where if all US sellers and all US collectors stopped buying Japanese product, this would go away. But with that, he has customers that he wants to provide what they're asking for, but he also understands that like, he'd much rather people buy his English product because the margins are the exact same and it's a lot less risk for him buying this product as to buying this incredibly inflated Japanese product. Guys, if you respected what Brian has to say or you appreciated some of the information that he gave us that most of us can't really see because we don't work with these people every day, go over to pokeany.com, use code applesauce, you'll get a free booster pack with your order, pre-order some Obsidian Flames, pre-order some Pokemon 151, go buy yourself some Korean booster boxes or some Japanese booster boxes and trust that he is going to take care of you and you're gonna get your stuff in a timely fashion and very, very safe. Lots of cool, interesting information in this video. If you enjoyed it, do me a favor, hit that thumbs up button. It's a great way for you to support the video and it's absolutely free for you to do it. And if you liked this one, I bet you you'll like that one right there. Lots of cool information in it. And like I always say, my friends, find somebody to love and serve today. Be the change you wanna see in the world. See you next time.